I've actually been working with the Sarco Ray for about 30 years, and this repower project that we're currently doing uh, has been approximately three years. We essentially reuse all of the components that are original to the T282 truck. Well, first we start with the main traction alternator. This is original from the T282 truck, and this cradle assembly is the original cradle assembly. We only modify this end of the section of the cradle to adapt to our engine as compared to the MTU. So that all remains unchanged, and this is very important because when you put this in the same position, we don't change any hydraulic lines, the drive line connections, any of the OEM hyd hydraulic connection points, the pumps, the drives. We don't alter anything in the back from the engine back. So it's very critical. This is the QSK60 engine rated at 2,850 horsepower. We refer to this as a dual stage because it has this superstructure and the four extra turbos on top with intercoolers as compared to a single stage engine that only has four turbos on the top. So this allows us to get to that horsepower level as well as the high altitudes. Uh, this is an MCRS certified tier two engine. Uh, you can see some of that by the plumbing on the injectors is external. We have an MCRS fuel system on this engine. One of the features that we put on here is the pre-lube unit. This pre-lubes the engine before it started every single time. And these are simply the controls down lower for the pre-lube system. This is the eliminator system. It's comprised of two components essentially. The main section is the main filtration section of the filter element. And this section is the bypass section which contains a centrifuge. The purpose of this and the reason that we've called it the eliminator is it eliminates the, the need for spin-on oil filters. And it also helps us extend our oil drain intervals. So the way this system works quite simply is this pump drives a manifold inside that filters the oil and 5% of that oil gets redirected into this centrifuge. And that oil that's being redirected in here is a lot like a swimming pool filter. We're back flushing the main filtration system and catching all of the biparticles in the centrifuge. So this, this becomes the only component of this that requires service. And this only has to be serviced every 2,000 hours as compared to spin-on filters, which are every 250 hours. So again, it's very friendly to the environment. Up here we just have the fan, fan drive assemblies, uh, the charging alternator. As you see here, we have a front cross member that was the original cross member for the 20V MTU engine. And that's what supported the front of the engine in the case of the MTU. We fabricated and installed this cross member to support the front of the Cummins engine. And again, because the engine's a 16-cylinder engine versus a 20-cylinder engine, you can see the difference of how much shorter our engine is. The radiator is the original radiator from the T282 truck. This shroud area from here to here is the original shroud. And what we fabricate during this conversion is basically this tunnel portion that helps us get back to our engine because of the length differences. But also, as you can see, the opening up here the MTU engine would use a 96 inch diameter fan and we're actually utilizing a 78 inch diameter fan. On the other side of the radiator we have the first stage of the fuel filtration. This is a single unit where we used to have a three unit design. So this again streamlines the design and makes it much more appealing to the customer. But this is also the nano net technology that we have with the, with the filtration and uh, what we'll do is we will, when we set this in the truck, we'll bring the plumbing from the fuel tank to this unit. And then from here, it will go up and around here into the fuel cooler, and then through the fuel cooler over to the main filter head and into the engine. One other piece on the way down the engine line here is this radiator support. Just another example of the many components that we reuse, no change to this during this conversion process.
And then if we get up on the engine here, we have the MCRS style fuel pump. And down here is the second stage of the fuel filtration system, which is also the NanoNet technology. And the newer style breather system, which incorporates the filler cap. As you come into the tier two and start going into tier four technology, the requirement of the fuel becomes extremely more stringent. And this NanoNet technology helps us get to those levels because fuel in a mine environment is very difficult to keep clean. So clean filtration is extremely critical for high pressure fuel injection designs. This is the connection where we connect these three cannon plugs and then this wire loom will be ran along the horse collar of the truck up into the back of the cab of the truck and that's where we will do the electrical interface from the engine to the control system of the truck. Okay, at this point, this module is almost complete. We have the fan shroud and a little bit of piping left to complete. And then we will ship this out later this evening. So overnight, this module will be at the customer site. and We will begin the repower process tomorrow on the mine site. That'll be approximately two and a half days. And that process consists of removing the competitive engine, installing this module, converting the intake and exhaust system and the electrical system and then we will load test the truck and test the truck in the mine site itself with a load on the truck. And at that point, we go through an acceptance agreement with the customer and put it back into the production cycle.